transportation 80 years from now? In eight years. In 80. Oh, in 80 years. Yeah. Well. Wow. Um. Um. Hmm. It's a good question. It's a great question. You asking me? In 80 years, people will go from point A to point B in probably a number of methods. Um, I tend to privilege one specific method, which would be the alpha position of the foot. Walking is certainly great for the environment, certainly great for your health. It's certainly fantastic to discover social spaces. It's a great way to mix. The foot is almost perfect. When you say 80 years, I think it's a chance to really think big. In 80 years, of course, that's easy. A flying car, we're gonna be everywhere. And jetpacks would be nice. I don't know, personal helicopters. People talk about teleportation. That's looking like a possibility. Magnetic levitation is another one. What if we could unlock gravity? Definitely. Well, that's gonna happen way before that. I think that's within a few weeks. I am amazed at the progress that gets made in, in 10 or 20 years. And so when I think of 80 years, I think, gosh, all kinds of things can be possible. I think the internal combustion engine was a bad idea from the outset. It's inefficient and it's dirty, it's noisy, it pollutes. The environmental issues that we've created are entirely our own. They affect essentially us. Nature will still be here when we're gone. We have only two choices. We either learn how to adapt with the planet or we have to get off. John F. Kennedy had a great quote. If man created problems, man can solve them. Well, we are in a pickle. <laughs> if you're going to generate large quantities of electric power, how do you do that? Wind, the ocean, the sun. You know, the sun produces 800 million gigawatts constantly. But here on the ground, sunlight isn't always available. We have clouds, we have nighttime. In space, you can build very large satellites a mile across or more, which will generate hundreds of thousands of megawatts. The fuel that we'll use really is this stuff, water. Hydrogen makes an excellent fuel. It burns cleanly, and when you burn it, the waste product is more water. In the last 50 years, we have organized ourselves to make it so that we can't live without cars. For the last 100 years, cities have been designed around cars. I think now it's time we make cars designed for the city. You want to do something that is leapfrogging previous technologies. For instance, if you think of the cell phone, it's a fantastic device. And when you measure it against the landline, it's impossible to think, why would I use anything else but a cell phone? So the future car for a city, it's gotta do the same thing that a cell phone has done with landlines. So we want this kind of social mobility device that's kind of a Facebook on wheels. When you can get in a car and say, take me to destination seven, that's gonna be a new form of transportation control-free vehicles where basically there's no such thing as a driver, there's just passengers. Glass technology will change, lighting technology. An autopilot system. Mechanical drive systems will disappear. Stackable cars. Everything's becoming more advanced. A train of cars. Cars that articulate their frames and stand up and then interlock with the car behind it and charges via induction in the street. Maybe people won't even own cars anymore in 80 years. Maybe they'll just be fleets of robot-controlled cars. There's a hopefulness predicting things that sound outlandish to us now. There's a lot of optimism in thinking about the future. It's a kind of exercise in dreaming. We can do anything. We can do whatever we want to because, because you could send uh, you sent a dude to the moon, you know? People that are, you know, are known as innovators or, or uh, uh, have all, they've all had the vision to look beyond where they are today uh, and see things that other people couldn't see and see new possibilities and new applications. I'm counting on being surprised. 
so far, history's never let me down. I've been surprised just from the time that I was a child till now. I'm amazed at watching my own kids and how they're living compared to the way I grew up.